All right, y'all. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Stacy with Bow Race Cajun Cuisine. So let's go ahead tonight. Well, actually today, because it's just for the fire. Anyway, we about to make us some swamp dump pasta. All right, what swamp dump pasta is? Swamp dump pasta is nothing but loaded mac and cheese, and it's loaded with um, shrimp, sausage, and I took it an extra step and put some spinach in it. Let me tell you something, baby. It go hard. Yeah, it do. All right, so for our swamp dump pasta, we're going to need a lot of stuff to make this taste good. I like to use evaporated milk, darling. It's a personal choice. You can use whole milk, uh, the vegan stuff, whatever, your choice. But anyway, because you can make this recipe uh, vegan. You can use vegan uh, cheese and vegan milk and, you know, do your thing. All right. So we're going to have some evaporated milk. We're going to need some kosher salt to season our water. We're going to need some cumin. Some paprika, some garlic powder, some minced garlic, some parsley flakes, a little bit of diced onion, and I do mean a little, not a whole lot. Uh, some black pepper, you're going to need some sausage, and I always say about a pound of sausage, depending on how much you're making. Uh, a lot of shrimp, this is like two pounds of shrimp. So you're gonna need some raw shrimp, raw meaning uncooked. Don't break, don't go get that cooked stuff. It's already cooked, and then you gonna cook it again, and then you wonder why your shrimp come out hard. It's cooked. Don't go get no cooked shrimp, baby. We gonna use these raw shrimp. You feel me? Yes, yes, yes. You're gonna need one pan and one pot. Yep, we're going to do it out of one pan and one pot. And then when we get ready to uh, put it in, I'm going to use a fall pan because I'm selling this. But you can use any pan that you have in your kitchen uh, for your family. But we're going to butter this sucker up. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to let a little music play just a little bit. And I want y'all to listen to this song. It's by Calvin Richardson. And the name of the song is Treat Her Right. That's for whoever needs that. Treat her right, baby. Or treat him right. Because some of you ladies don't know how to treat these men. And these men don't know how to treat these ladies. You know, we don't know how to treat each other. We need to do what the Bible says. Treat the pe people like you want to be treated. Simple as that. Let's butter this pain. I'm done preaching. Let's butter it up. All right. Butter in a pan is nothing but what I said. Butter the pan. Take that pan and that butter and get it in that pan real good. Get every corner. This keeps your uh, mac and cheese from sticking to the pan, guys. Because it's going to be packed full of flavor. And you're going to be mad when some of it's stuck in the pan. Sure are. That's what your pan look like once it's been buttered. It's just butter. A buttered pan. <laughs> All right, set that to the side. Next thing you want to get this pot here filled with water. Fill it um, to your liking. Uh, actually enough to cover the pasta. Oh, that was the one thing I didn't talk about, huh? I like to use... I don't know how to say this. I ain't gonna even lie to y'all. It's some twisted pasta. <laughs> but there you go. This is what I like to use for my making cheese because you cook it al dente and you can bake it. And al dente is um, making the pasta um, is not mushy and it's in between. This is in, it's like a perfect cook. But anyway, you can do this with your al dente. Alright, so we got our pot filled with water. Alright. Season the water. So we're going to put some garlic powder in there. Don't 
Don't be scared. Season that water. Some smoked paprika. That's too well, maybe it's not. No, that's good. All right, so cumin. Some kosher salt. Get that salt, please put salt in your water. There's nothing worse than take bite down into some, some pasta that don't have flavor. And some onion powder. So all I put in there was some garlic powder, some onion powder, some cumin, some kosher salt, kosher, and some paprika. That's all I put in the water, okay? And if I wanted a little spicy, I put in a little Creole seasoning because I like mine to have a little kick. And remember, you're going to drain and rinse this pasta off, so you'll be rinsing off some of the seasoning when you do that. Bring that pot to a rolling ball, then put the pasta in once the water has started boiling. While we're waiting on that to do that, we're going to grab our kicking chicken seasoning and our shrimp. All right, let's cut him out. I bet somebody said, oh, my song, I'm about to listen to that while I play it again. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna season our shrimp. Chicken, chicken is what we use. Some cumin. Some garlic powder. And Creole seasoning. And that's it. Give that a nice mix around. Lost the glove. <laughs> the seasoning is strong.
No, I don't know nobody named Mark, and no, he's not 14 years old. This is a Bible verse, uh, actually a book in the Bible that has 77 verses, I believe, 76 or 77, and I could be one or two off, but this is our code, so on this video, in the comment section, put Mark 14, okay? When you do that, you will... Be entered to win one of these nice and that is that hurts because it's it's like um not a yeti brand but it is like those cups but anyway they last I mean my ice literally stays in this cup almost two days literally no lie I fill it up with ice and I sip on the water or whatever and it's in there the next day literally no lie. So this is a really, really good cup. So you're going to get the Bow Race logo on there, Fall in Love Creations, and also your name and a recipe, okay? So your name is going to, so you're going to have your own personalized cup. This is at about a $45 value, and then I'm going to cook something and put it in your package. I'm going to have to freeze it and freeze it and put 9,000 ice packs in there, baby, and I'm going to overnight it. Double dead, two dead, but anyway. But you're gonna get it, all right? So, Mark 14, put that in the comment section because you wanna be entered in the drawing. The drawing ends uh, May 28th, and I'll draw names on the 30th or the 31st and make the announcement, okay? So, don't forget, let's get back to this meal. All right, so you get your sausage to stir. All right, they have browned enough and they have pulled enough juices out of them. So what we're gonna do now, without compromising, uh, pulling all of our, see that oil? That's what I want you guys to have. Well, I don't wanna drop in the sausage, but I'm gonna put your sausage in a separate container Leave the oil in the pan, it's important, okay? That's what you're about to fry your shrimp in. All right. And I'm falling out of love. Put you down. Told me how to love. Need your honey. That is Calvin Richardson, honey. That is not my music, but I love it. All right, so we have enough oil. We don't have to add any more oil in this pan, and I'm really hoping you guys can see this, but we don't have to put any more oil in this pan. Now we're going to put our shrimp in there, okay? We're going to crank that heat up. So I me to be ready and I'll... Water hadn't even begun to boil. Boil, water, boil. All right, so you're gonna cook your shrimp halfway, all right? You don't want them fully cooked. Halfway is what you're gonna do. All right, this water is almost ready. Go ahead and get this open. Don't forget to give it a stir. It's important that you stir it. Need a spoon. And the reason you stir it so it doesn't stick together, okay? If you wanna get it a little fancier, you could put in a tablespoon of butter, all right? That keeps it from sticking together and it's gonna be packed full of flavor. All right, so when we come back, I'll bring, I'm going to pause it and I'm going to bring you guys over closer to this area so that you can see what's going on. And I always break your boxes down that way when it's in the little, the little uh, mice and other stuff can't get stuck in your boxes. You can break your boxes down and actually you can pack more trash in your trash can uh, when you do that. All right, so we'll be right back. 
All right, so now we have gotten our shrimp. Let's go ahead and turn this one on. We're gonna use a stock pot. In this stock pot, we're gonna go ahead and put in some butter. All right, so that's about four tablespoons. And our pasta is at a rolling ball, which is good. And when I was talking about making sure that the shrimp is half cooked, this is what I mean. Half cooked. You don't want it fully cooked. And the reason you don't want to fully cook it is because it has to go in the oven, okay? And uh, it has to go in the oven with the pasta so we can melt the cheese. And while it's in there, it'll continue to cook, okay? So you don't want to cook that shrimp, those shrimp all the way. You want them half cooked, okay? I know they probably look a little dumb, but they're not, all right? Half cooked, and we have our sausage. So in our stock pot, what we're about to do, we're going to go ahead and melt this butter. Once that butter has fully melted, we're going to put in a little diced onion. I need a little bit more diced onion than that. So I'm going to put in some diced onion. And, and when I say diced, I'm talking like finely chop this stuff up. Y'all don't want this big people biting into your mac and cheese and they got all these chunks of onion in there. Not cute. It's not a good look. All right, chop it up. You don't need a whole lot, but you do need enough to add flavor, okay? And you want it fine. When I say fine, I want it fine, baby. Fine like me, you feel me? <laughs> fine like you. Fine like you. That's right. And I sure pray y'all having an amazing day. I thank you guys for watching. Thank you for tuning in. You guys are awesome. If you have not done so, please hit that like, subscribe button. I greatly appreciate it. The more people I can get to subscribe, the more I can get on up there where I can afford these groceries so I can keep belting out these recipes, you know. We do have a cookbook coming up at the end of 2019, so that'll help as well, all right? But I want to be able to have a video to go with the recipe. So that you guys can cook these things wherever you are. Wherever you are in the nation, baby. Our pasta is almost ready. Come on, butter. You want that butter fully melted before you add in the spinach. But you can go ahead and add in the diced onion. And when I say diced, I'm talking like fine. I, when I say fine, I want them things. I want that onion crushed up. You hear me? Get that in there. You're going to add in some minced garlic. And that's about a quarter of a teaspoon. It's not a whole lot. Just a little minced garlic to add flavor. Nobody wants flavorless food. Put some seasoning in it, baby. Put some seasoning in there. Get out a nice stir, all right? And that's going to saute. You want that to saute about three to four minutes. Three to four minutes. Three to four minutes. Three to four minutes. Yes, I said it. All right. Stir this pasta. It's not done. It got to keep cooking. Let that do what it needs to do. All right? We're about to add our spinach in there. All right, so let's reposition so y'all can see everything come together. All right, so let's go ahead and put our spinach in here. Spinach cooks down and it cooks down fast. So what we wanna do is whip this. We don't want to, uh, we don't wanna, uh, we don't want to cook it, we just want to wilt it, which is 
a um, mild cooking process, uh, just basically getting it to whip just a little bit. All right. Get all that spinach in there. There you go. So this was a one and a half pound bag. So there you go. So you'll know what we use for that. All right. You want to kind of hold your hand over it just a little bit. Yeah, you're going to get a facial while you stand over these this pasta. But you want to stir it because you don't want the spinach in the bottom to cook fully. And the rest of the spinach never made it through the wilting process. So give it a stir. I'm kind of, I'm leaning over to the side. I could use this eye, but I want to keep this eye cool because I want to uh, prepare my, put my dish together there. Wilting, and wilting spinach doesn't take that long, okay? I'm a G in the kitchen, so I don't suggest y'all cooking like I cook, per se, these methods. You can kind of move your stuff around. You can put this one over there that way and put, bring this pot up here. But these uh, techniques and stuff, man, let me tell y'all something. I've been doing this since I was a kid. Not this um, recipe, but I've been cooking since I was a kid. And, you know, as you do this stuff, different ideas come into play. Let that do this a little bit. And we're gonna check this pasta. Woohoo! It's hot. Because you wanna check it and make sure it's al dente. And it is, it's perfectly al dente. And it's hot, yes it is. All right, turn this finish off. So what we're about to do now, oh my God, it's perfectly seasoned. Let me tell y'all something, when I say perfect, you're gonna want to rinse this under, excuse me, cold water. Cold, okay? Cold water. All right, your spinach is wilted. And that's what wilted spinach looks like, okay? It's wilted. All right? I'm gonna put that over to the side. And we're going to Rinse our pasta off under cold water. When I do mean cold people, it has to be cold water. All right, while that's under the cold water, we're going to start the process. Let's get the spinach out of here. Because now it's, start, it's time to make our cheese sauce. I know you've been excited, like, where's the cheese? So it's time to make our cheese sauce. All right. And the cold, rinsing the pasta out in cold water stops the cooking process, okay? Because we want to keep this pasta in al dente form. Yes, we do. All right. So now we got that. We're going to use the same pot. So excuse me while I wash it out. While I'm washing this pot out, please hit that subscribe button and like button. Please tell everybody. Hit the notification bell um, down there so you guys can be notified when I drop a new video. And I try to drop a video every week. Sometimes you might get two or three videos in one week, depending on how I'm feeling, honey. Just never know. All right, so in this pot for our cheese sauce, grab that butter. You're like, man, she's using a lot of butter. You don't have to use butter. You can use margarine. But if you want to achieve these flavors, these flavors, <laughs> you're going to need to use some real butter, baby. 
And yes, I said butter. Mm-hmm. All right. Get all that water out of there. All the condensation needs to be going. All right, it's going. We're going to use doo -doo -doo -doo. one, two, three, four, five. Let's see. Let's go ahead and put in three tablespoons. Turn that down. We're going to put in a tablespoon. That's too much. A tablespoon of flour. That's a little bit more. There you go. Of flour. What the flour does is bind this together. You don't want your butter to burn, so turn the heat down and start stirring. All right? I'm a rude host. I want you guys in this pot. Come on over here. Get in this pot. Get in this pot. Get inside this pot, honey. Stir. Turn that heat down. Okay? Turn that heat down. On this on this electric stove. I got it on a four. Alright. And you see the color? Remove it from the heat. Oh, that smell good. I wish y'all were here. That smells so divine. The reason you're moving it from the heat right now, because you're getting ready to pour in this milk. All right? So, let's open this up. And I've already wiped down the tops. So we're gonna pour that in there. Half of the can, keep the other half, okay? Put it back on the heat. Start stirring. Stir. All right, I should have went on and opened this. We're going to cut this block in half. Because this is the large block. This is the uh, the 32 ounce that we're using. So we're going to use half of that. All right. When you get ready to put this in here, stir. I put it in in chunks, okay? But I break it, I break it off. I break it off. I'm breaking it off, all right? And there you go. Break that off in there. Wash my hands. Stir. See how thick it got? You're gonna wanna pour in a little water. You don't have to use water, you can use milk, but I'm using evaporated milk, so I'm gonna use water. All right, we're gonna stir that. Break that down, keep the fire, keep that heat low, all right? You're making a cheese sauce, you do not want it to stick. The key to this cheese sauce is stir. All right, we're gonna pour in the rest of our milk. I'm gonna hold a little milk to the side. We're gonna add in, we're gonna, yes, we're seasoning this again because remember, we rinsed a lot of our seasonings off of our macaroni. It still tastes good though, no lie. It's so good. But you rinsed a lot of it off, all right? Put some garlic powder in there. And a little Creole. That's it. Just a little bit. You don't want to make it salty, but you do want flavor, okay? Flavor with a little heat. At this point, it is time for you. To, that's when you can flavor this cheese sauce. Once you have added the, the macaroni back into, into it, that's pretty much a... We ain't going to be doing that at that point. Keep stirring. I'm going to pour some more milk in here. All right. And a little water. Okay. So the amount of water I put in there will equal the same amount uh, as the can, which is 12 ounces. All right. So stir that, stir that, stir that. You're making a cheese sauce. 
And I always remember that cheese has salt in it, so you don't, you know you don't have to really do a whole lot of uh, salt and stuff. But I like my food seasoned. All right. Now we're gonna put in a little more butter, another another uh, tablespoon. And then save the rest of this because we're going to use that once we uh, put everything together. We're going to put that in there, okay? Stir. And you can adjust your heat. And yeah, I'm splashing this. Stir, stir, stir. All right, with that other half, you can squeeze a little more in there. And divide it up, all right? This is real-time cooking, guys. Real-time cooking. I'm going to put a little more Creole seasoning in there because I added that other cheese. And it's not even a quarter of a teaspoon. It's like, I'm talking like sprinkled. Only because I want the flavor, okay? Alright, crank the heat up just a little bit. And all of, before you add the pasta, when you bring that whisk out of there and you still have chunks of cheese, not good. Keep stirring. It's not ready yet. Keep stirring. It's almost ready, but it's not quite ready. All right, now get ready to start adding in your other cheeses because now you're not pulling those chunks out. Those itty bitty little pieces of chunks, those are milk, so you don't have to worry about that. But you don't want the big ones. Keep stirring if you're concerned about it though, like I am. All right, but remember, you had a fine line between burning your cheese sauce and having perfect cheese sauce. Right now you have perfect cheese sauce. All right, so now you're going to add in your pasta. All right, skip the water that's in there. You don't want that. Put the pasta in there. This is one box, okay? If you're feeding a lot of people, then you're going to need two or three boxes. But for us, it's just one box, all right? Make sure you don't have any of that water. All right. There you go. So, we're well, already done with that. Stir that in. Alright, this is where the fun part begins. Alright, so we got our sauce in there. We got our our, uh, our pasta in there. Now we're going to add in our cheese, please. Yes, honey. Cheese me up. I'm gonna put just a little Parmesan because I have some. I have some Parmesan. It's just gonna add to the depths of cheese flavor. So just a little Parmesan flavor in there. Stir it. You see how watery it is right now? Trust me, it's gonna thicken up. All right. Then I have some expertly paired cheese. I'm just going to dump all that in there. All right. Get that in there. Get that. Get on in there. And get it a stir. Okay. Now, here's my secret cheese. Well, one of my secret cheeses. I got a bunch of cheeses I like to use. But look at that. See how that's thickening up? We're going to use some mascarpone, okay? This is really good. It makes it sweet and creamy. I just love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. And everyone at the, every person that has ever purchased this from me or eaten this is in love with it too. All right, so go half. Just cut across and make sure you get half of that. You want to make sure you get it. 
exactly half of that container, okay? So half of this to one box of macaroni. And you don't want to leave any on that spoon. You want to get all of that. All right, stir it in. Give it a stir. Keep stirring. You see how it's thickening up? Turn the heat off. Turn it off. Add in a little more garlic powder. Just a little. You don't have to put a whole lot. And stir. Okay? Stir. And y'all see how rich and creamy that is? Look how pretty that is. That's a mac and cheese, baby. That's a mac and cheese for you, baby. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. All right, let's assemble our dish. Now, remember that the flour that we browned in the beginning is going to give us what we need when it comes to thickening it up, all right? So we got our pan that we buttered in the beginning, remember? So we're gonna take our, oh man, it's all, look at, look at that. Y'all see how pretty and creamy that is? So we're gonna take that and we're going to, oh, y'all, oh, man, all that cheesy goodness. All that cheesy goodness. And we're going to put it down up. Can't put it on there. That's too hot. <laughs> all right. Look at that. Come on. We're just putting a, a small layer, all right, at the bottom, okay? It's a small layer at the bottom. Not a, a huge layer, just... All we're doing is just co covering the bottom of the pan with some mac and cheese. That's it. All right. Now we're going to take our spinach that we wilted. This is the swamp duck pasta. So this is where that wilted spinach gives us this swamp look. I don't want no spinach in my mac and cheese. Everybody that had this, no lie, was like, oh my God, why is spinach in it? Oh my God, why haven't I been eating it like this forever? <laughs> because guess what? You didn't know and you didn't have this recipe. Okay? That's where Miss Stacy, Auntie Stacy came into the picture, baby, and said, look, we ain't got to keep eating our food, boy. We gonna, we gonna do what we do. We need to do to this thing. All right? So spread that spinach out. That way, when somebody dip in, they get a piece of spinach and every bite. All right, now, put this pasta in here. I can move that in a cool off. All right, so let's put this pasta in here. This mac and cheese. I don't know. Get that in there. All right. Spread that joy around. Spread it around, spread it around, spread it. All right. Now, that's when this half done shrimp come into play. So you're gonna put the shrimp in there. Swamp dog. Uh, nobody want to dig in and not get no shrimp. We're going to make some shrimpy. Shrimpy, shrimpy, shrimpy. All right. Then you're going to put in your sausage. Okay. All right. So there you go. Swamp dog pasta. Not finished yet. I'm talking about there you go. Not finished yet. Make sure it got some sausage in there. Yeah, cover that up. You don't want to even see the mac and cheese for all this meat in here. Shrimp and sausage and spinach. All right, once you do that, you're going to take this open. And this is mozzarella, okay? So we're gonna take some mozzarella. 
and we're just gonna sprinkle it just a little bit because remember that's cheesy yes lord it's cheesy <coughs> excuse me then we got some um <laughs> sorry you talk a long time your throat get dry all right so then we're gonna add in a little triple cheddar and you can use whatever your favorite cheese is. It's up to you. It's not up to me. It's your palate. We're going to use a little. All right, just a little. Then we're going to pull out my all-time favorite. Smoked Gouda. Look at that, baby. Smoke freaking Gouda. Smoked Gouda. All right. So we're going to open that. I got a half open, but it ain't open enough for me to shred it. There we are. I mean, grate it. All right. And then we're going to grate some of that over that, okay? This gives it that smoky flavor. All right. And it adds to the cheesy, easy gooeyness. Get in those corners because the corners are neglected, right? Then we're gonna finish it off with all. You see how if you if you stop stirring, you see in the bottom what I was trying to tell y'all how it can start to burn. You see that brown in the bottom of there? But that's not in our mac and cheese, hallelujah, because we took it off the fire. That's just it sitting there. Alright. And put the rest of that mac and cheese on top. If you burn your cheese, please, and if you burn, end up burning your cheese, don't, I mean, all I can tell you is you better stir, baby. That's all I can tell you. Yep. Get all that on there. Okay. And spread it out real good. Yeah, there we go. Extra. Spread it out, all right? And the reason you want to spread it out, because really, honestly, I should have used two boxes because I want to, uh, I got another can, uh, pan to make, but I want to really hide the meat, but it's going to be all right. We're going to have to go like it is, right? Then we're going to take some more smoked Gouda and put it on top. Okay. And you determine how much smoked Gouda you want to use. This is what I'm doing. All right. Because this is what sells. And the reason you want that on top is because when you get ready to stick this in the oven to brown it, you'll have the whole top of be cheesy, okay? So when they look at it and we got the smoked gouda on there, right? So we're going to try to hit these corners with a little of the mozzarella. Just a little. You don't have to get crazy because you don't want the cheese to take away from the meat the, the, the shrimp and the sausage all right and there you have it there you have it swamp dump pasta baby now you're going to take slivers and i do mean slivers put one right in the center and i'm talking like slivers one right there, and then one there. Just because butter adds to the flavor, that's all. All right, and it's gonna help that, help crisp up that uh, cheese really good, even though you put it in the oven, you just want a little bit. And matter of fact, I'm gonna break this up. Yep, not big chunks in the area, you just wanna. All right, you guys are awesome. Swamp Dump Pasta. You can take that to the family reunion. You can take that to um, Bar Mitzvah. 
You can take that to the potluck at work if you're clean. Please don't take none to the potluck and you got animals crawling out across your cabinets and stuff. We can't eat your food, babe. No offense, we just can't eat your food. Okay. All right. So, all right. Uh, subscribe, like, share. Tell everybody. Tell your mama and your daddy and them. And yes, I got to clean this mess up. And... Our code word, y'all know this is what I was looking for. Our code word is Mark 14. So on this video, in the comment section, make sure that you put Mark 14. When your name pops up and you put this in the comment section, I'm going to write your name down. You can put it in there as many times as you want. As many times as you want to sit there and write Mark 14. Write it. You feel me? Go and read it. It's in the Bible. This comes out of the Bible. Okay, go and read it. Tell me what you liked about it. You know, uh, what you learned. All right. Mark 14. Please share this. Please hit that subscribe button, that like button. Um, the notification, the notifications bell, hit that as well so that you can be notified when uh the next video comes out. All right, let's sing our theme song. Let's cook, let's eat. Everybody repeat, it's Villa's time. I love you guys. See you next time. Bye.